I'm The Gentleman Wake, and this is a five minute deck spotlight. In this episode, we take a look at the Imperial deck from King's Wild Project. Be sure to watch all the way to the end for info on an ongoing contest. And remember, for the best in playing cards content, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. The Imperial deck was made available in two versions. The Signature Edition was only offered to members of the King's Wild Shorts subscription service, and as the name implies, designer Jackson Robinson signed his autograph on the front of each red tuck case. The White Edition is the retail version of the deck. Both tuck cases are printed on high quality matte cardstock paper and feature raised gold metallic ink printed in the intaglio style, which uses etched metal plates to produce the line work. They were printed by artistry engraving and embossing out of Chicago, Illinois. The sides and bottom of the box iterate the designer and announce that they were printed by the expert playing card company. The back of the box features a representation of the back design. The works of designer Jackson Robinson have been featured many times on this channel and are known for well thought out artwork with strong thematic motifs. The Imperial deck is a bit different. The front of the tuck case reads playing cards of the highest standards, which implies that the deck, while indeed premium, is intended for common use. Therefore, the motif is less pronounced than the typical King's Wild offering. Mostly, the line work is meant to evoke royal crest and banners. The tuck flap is held closed by a gold foil seal. The interior tuck flap recalls Jackson Robinson's personal motto, and the small tuck flaps include a reference to number 13, a recurring element often found on King's Wild project releases. The card backs feature a prominent X-style monochromatic design with ornamentation and embellishments that are reminiscent of the cigar band style artwork of the Maduro deck, also by Jackson Robinson. However, this is much more minimalist. The design is printed in gold metallic ink and includes a white poker style border. There are two small circular seals that include what look to be hourglasses within, which aside from the seashell style forms on the X itself represent the only readily identifiable shapes. The custom faces of the cards carry over the minimalist aesthetic. The pips and indices are smaller and more subdued than standard. The design of the pips is also a bit more rounded and the stems of the clubs and spades are much less pronounced. Pip placement is generally standard, although the pips are spread out a bit more. The Ace of Spades includes a large spade pip with a gold metallic shining sun icon behind a banner displaying the deck name. Overall, the artistic choices give the deck a feeling of elegance that's only accentuated by the fantastic chord cards. The chord cards feature variants of Jackson Robinson's well-established King's Wild Courts, which are frankly some of my favorite chord cards of all. The Imperial versions are stripped of any coloration, relying only on the gold metallic ink to bring out the details of the cards. I love that the court members are highly reminiscent of standard bicycle courts while still modernizing the line work without taking away what makes them feel classic. Although the stylized faces are the biggest draw, the weapons and clothing here are really cool as well. My favorites include the axe on the Jack of Hearts, the royal tunic on the Suicide King, the frills of the Queen of Spades blouse, and the kimono style overlapping vestments on the Jack of Spades. The deck includes two jokers as well, both printed in gold ink, the Shining Sun and Waxing Gibbous Moon. As mentioned, the cards are printed by EPCC and handle pretty well. They are a bit stiffer than the decks I'm used to from the United States Playing Card Company or Cardamundi. Still, they spring, dribble, and fan well. Pharaoh shuffles are not as smooth, however the deck is traditionally cut. Obviously not a deck built for cardistry, although they could be used for magic. It's an elegant deck, perfect for a special game night or just for collecting. The White Edition Imperial deck is still available on kingswildproject.com. This is a premium deck and the $25 price tag reflects that. Anyway, special thanks to Jackson Robinson for sending me these decks to review for you. I don't have an Imperial deck to give away in this episode, but if you want a chance to win a half brick of decks, that's right, six decks, including a King's Wild Project Tigers deck, 
be sure to head over to my Instagram and enter the contest in the description of my United Cardist Deck of the Year post. In the meantime, comment below and let me know if you'd like to see me do some live streams. It might be a cool way to, you know, unbox some decks that I wouldn't necessarily give time to review. And also I get to field questions from you guys and answer live. And remember, for the best in playing cards content, click here to subscribe if you haven't already. I've been The Gentleman Wake. See you next time.